Hi, my name's Lucky, I'm a guy with plants, and welcome back to my channel. So, this might become a series, but for today's video, I thought it might be fun to talk about some of the factors that go into making a good potting mix. You know, when I first started getting into plants, I would actually bum potting mix off of my then housemate, and the only thing I would add to it would be maybe a little bit of sand from the garden. As it turned out, that's not really a recipe for success, and it took me some time to figure out that that was the source as to why my plants weren't flourishing. Um, so in today's vid, I just want to talk about some of the things I've learned along the way, some of the tips and tricks, um, and how I make my soil. So what makes a good potting mix? Um, I'd say there's three main factors. The number one most important thing for me would be uh, aeration and drainage. Plants need oxygen just like us, and compressed or soggy soil cuts off that oxygen supply and leads to uh, dead plants. How we can avoid that is by making sure that our soil is aerated. That meaning it's filled with thousands of tiny air pockets that let water travel through quickly and keep a, a supply of oxygen right there at the roots where it's needed. The best way to do that is to make sure that there's a variety of organic and inorganic material present within your soil, as well as plenty of different particle sizes or chunkiness. Soil with a large degree of chunk allows water to pass through quickly, as well as avoid stratification, which is the separation of your soil into different layers, which you may notice when watering and perlite begins to float to the top. What that indicates is that there's not enough different particle sizes present within your soil to keep each other locked in like a puzzle, if that makes sense. Some materials I use to increase the chunkiness and aeration of the soil include perlite, vermicula, sand, charcoal and mulch or bark chips. Obviously everybody knows what perlite is, it's that superheated uh, volcanic glass. It's super light and airy and adds a lot of oxygen into your mix. Um, vermiculite is very similar to perlite, it's just a little bit heavier. Sand, another thing is it can be fine or gritty, that's just another way to add inorganic material into your mix and add to those air pockets. Charcoal is really good as well because, again, it's different particle sizes as well as adding the sweetening effect. If you're in an area that has heavily chlorinated or fluorinated water, I cannot recommend charcoal enough. It's great over the long term as it keeps those chemicals away from the roots of the plant. Bark chips as well add a lot of different particle sizes uh, as well as really contributing to the breaking up the soil effect. So using these materials in tandem creates a chunky soil that's full of different particle sizes and what that does is encourage your plant to develop a variety of different types of roots. Um, when a plant is in soil that's full of all the same particle size, the roots are a lot weaker and a lot less vigorous. By adding lots of different chunk sizes to the soil, you're encouraging roots to become stronger and that means that they're going to be taking up more nutrients over time and that's only going to translate into better growth. The next thing I want to talk about is water retention. Obviously we want water to flow quickly through the pot, but if it doesn't actually stick around then what's the point, right? So some of the things that I mentioned before help with water retention, but the two main things that I use to increase the uh, water retention of my soil is peat moss and compost. So both of these materials hold many times their individual weight in water and what that does is it just helps water stick to the soil as it moves through the pot. Um, of the two I'd say that compost is more important but peat moss kind of adds a little bit more acidity back into the soil which the charcoal can actually take out um, and as it decomposes it kind of binds the soil together as a kind of glue which also helps minimize stratification. Like I said before, compost is more important in my opinion because it acts as a bank of macro and micronutrients that slowly release to your plant's roots over time. Um, you want to get your hands on a pasteurised compost unless you're using a homemade one because you don't want to introduce any fungus or uh, bacteria that may have come from another source into your plants inside. It's just easier and safer to use a sterilised uh, compost. And that actually brings me to the final factor, which is bioactivity. Soil in nature is full of microbes, bacteria, fungi, spores, uh, bugs, other microorganisms, and all of them interact with a plant and its immune system. Because most of the material that we get from garden centres is likely to be pasteurised, 
it pays to add some of the good bacteria back in so that we can mimic those natural living soils found in the wild. There are heaps and heaps of products you can use to achieve this goal. Um, I'd recommend worm castings, slow release pellets or beads, um, liquid compost, fish emulsion, seaweed emulsion, those sorts of natural and organic things come with plenty of bacteria and microbes of their own um, and they'll help achieve a living healthy soil. A good hack to boost the existing microbes in your soil is to just reserve any of the cooking liquid you use to boil vegetables or eggs or pasta. Um, dilute that a little bit and water your plants with it and it will stimulate the microbes at the root level as well as provide them with a lot of microbe food and also some um, uh, macro and micronutrients and starches, those sorts of things that your plant might be missing out on otherwise. So now that that's out of the way, I'm going to take you out the back and I'm going to make some soil. Um, I'm just editing now and I want to add that this sort of a mix is mostly for aroids. Um, but I've had great success with all of my plants just by varying the different concentrations um, of each ingredient. So, I mean, experiment, have a go. Um, yeah. Welcome to my backyard. Um, as you can see, I've still got some leftover dirt in here. So what I'm going to do is just use that as the base for um, the next mix that I make. So obviously I start by adding just some basic potting mix. Um, I use the cheapest that I can find. I'm not sure if this is focusing. Hopefully it's not too glary because of the sun. Um, but I just use the cheapest one that I can find that doesn't have any water crystals in it or like um, wetting crystals. Uh, we don't really need them because of what we're gonna add. Um, as you can see, it's just dirt. It's nothing um, special. Go ahead and add that. The next thing I do is add some compost. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, this one is mushroom compost. So it's actually um, the spent medium used to grow like commercial mushrooms that you would find in the shop. Um, and what it is, what it, what's then done to it is it's heated to sterilize it. Um, and then it's just pre like packaged and, and sold for use as compost and it's mostly made of straw and um, I think chicken and horse manure so you know it really fits that slow release nutrients sort of mold that we're going for and it also adds a lot of water retention straight into your soil so I like to add about a third of the uh, soil worth of um, compost so about a third of what I just added as potting mix. If you can get yourself something like something like that, it's good to help with um, the keep just keeping your measurements kind of similar. Um, it's not it's not essential, but I find it a little bit easy to use something like this, so I can just measure out how many scoops I've gotten of what. There you can see the compost. So again, sorry about that glare. I'm not really sure how to fix it. Um, but it's kind of comes in chunks. So something that I like to do is just run my hands through it to make sure that it's broken into little pieces. And just pop it in there. Anyway, the next that I use is charcoal. Um, and you can see that it's a real fine sort of texture. So you can get chunkier, chunkier bits. I like using this because it kind of permeates the mix in that sense, like it mixes its whole way through. So I'll just add that. Now I don't typically like to add too much perlite, but that's what it looks like. It's kind of like really airy, breaks into tiny pieces. Um, I prefer using vermiculite, which is this kind of really um, spongy sort of medium. It's a uh, some sort of metal, um, I don't know what it is, but it's similar to how perlite is made. It's just superheated and creates this sort of porous material that soaks up moisture. We'll add that. So this is the bag that the vermiculite comes in. I'm not sure how well or if you can see this at all. So I'm just using a bag of coarse sand. Um, you can get them in those smaller bags. Um, but sand is sand. Uh, that's 
I just split that as I put it down and it's leaking all over the ground. Great. <laughs> but that's paving sand, so it's a lot cheaper than the sand that you're going to get that's specifically for, um, I guess, horticulture. But, you know, sand is sand. That was about $7, a lot cheaper than what you would get for a similar size bag of, um, yeah, the horticultural sand. So, add that. Um, the next thing I add is the butter or wood chips. Um, I'm just using mulch because it's cheaper, again, like kind of like a hack, like the um, paving sand. So that's what they look like. They're very chunky, you know, it comes in these sorts of... I like to pick any, anything that's a bit too big out of it, just because I'm going to be mixing it with my hands. But um, as you can see, you know, it comes with a lot of dust as well, and that's only going to break down into your plant and release nitrogen over time. So that's also really, really good. And the um, last thing that I last thing that I add are these slow release um, fertilizer pellets or beads. I think they are. Um, they also come with those microbes, like I said. So keep your eyes out for something like that. That's what they look like. You know, I put a small handful in there, and then I just mix it up. And as you can see, you know, it's got all these different size bits and pieces in it. You can see the multiple different like particle size and all that. And what's going to happen when this gets potted up is that water will just drain straight through. And it's a, it's a heavily nutrient dense sort of mix, but it's in a way that slowly releases over time. So it's not going to shock your plants roots or anything like that. And as you can see how it's kind of crumbly in my hands. The one thing that I didn't add was peat moss and that's just because i don't have any at the moment it's not necessarily essential you know none of these things are essential to have a really healthy plant but you know if you you give your plants more to work with they'll give you more in growth just for demonstration purposes i'm going to up pot this plant um it's getting too big for its pot it's kind of heavy for the size of the pot um, and I'm going to plant it in here because I think it'll be able to spread out a bit more and because it's a like with wide sort of pot I'm hoping that it'll spread some in the bottom mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to pull this out because there's not exactly just one stem look at those roots wow Good. Sweet. Oh no, I keep breaking them. <laughs> there we are. So yeah, um, with that, I'm going to wrap the video up here. I uh, hope you enjoyed learning something new about soil. Um, just quickly, I know that space may be a problem for some people, you know, you're not always going to be able to just buy all these ingredients and house them somewhere, you know, if you're living in a small apartment, probably not something that's going to work for you. But I do recommend um, in that case that you use any sort of premium indoor potting mix. Um, and just add about 20% of perlite or charcoal or vermiculite or something like that just to add extra aeration and extra break to the soil. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.